Good morning and welcome to our mission message and welcome new friends to our message message. Uh, mission message. Goeiemorgen, welkom. Um, dit is my nogal opvallend dat daar is so een klein donker wolkie oor partij van my vrienden en familie. Ek kom achter haar so een kleine neerslachtigheid en desperaatheid en al verwaardheid en amper een gevoel van verlatenheid onder ons mense. Hierdie boodskap is een boodskap van onderskraging uh, wat ons kan vat uit die lewe en karakter van die lewe. Af nou te sê, is some little dark cloud over some of our people. Uh, I feel there is depression and desperation and maybe confusion and maybe a feeling of loneliness and forsakenness creeping into uh, our people, our family and friends in, and in the camp of Optic Missions Church. And I think today our scripture from 1 Kings 19 is quite relevant. Perhaps going to read the whole of 1 Kings 18 and 19 and the beginning of Kings 20. But the bottom line here is we can take so much spiritual encouragement and elements and lessons out of the life of Elijah. Um, you know, uh, the reality of this uh, lockdown and COVID-19, yes, in some areas the, the regulations has been relaxed and so forth, but still there's much uh, discomfort and we can't really live the way we want to. It struck me this week, to ek een van my uh, vriende en vriendin ontmoet, die weet ek is een ou van drukkies gee en, en hand, handdruk en so aan. So, during this very week, I realized the reality of this uh, uh, scare of the pandemic. And uh, I'm a person that likes to hug people and, and uh, give them handshakes and so forth. And this week, one of my friends approached me and, and I, I unfortunately had to remind her that keep your social distance. Um, like I said previously, we, we're not immune to anything, um, that, but we, we have promises of eternal life health and recovery, but no one wants to go through the symptoms of this dreaded disease. So please, let's obey the authorities, let's keep our social distance and the big focus on hygiene. Let's not slacken up, okay, for our sake, the sake of our families, friends and our colleagues. But then today, uh, uh, just a reminder from the uh, uh, life and ministry of Elijah. So here's Elijah. Very good example. After his uh, 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 declaration of drought in the area, Jezebel had her knives out for him. And then after the conquest at Baal on the Mount Carmel, where Elijah called down fire and rain from heaven, and then fire uh, that, that lit his altar, and then he conquered and he had victory over the false prophets of um, King Ahab and then also over the false religion of Baal. So after that great victory of Elijah, I can say that in the whole history of Israel, the, uh, um, Elijah the prophet, Elijah the prophet of fire, I like him to, to call him the prophet of fire, uh, prophet Elijah, the second greatest uh, prophet in the whole history of um, Israel after, of course, Moses. So here's the thing. So after this great victory and big miracle and big testimony that Jehovah is God on Mount Carmel, now Jezebel wanted to kill him and she sends people after him to kill him. Now, Elijah's name mean. Jehovah my God. Isn't that personal? Jehovah my God. How personal is that? Elijah was truly a man of God. He was a, a man of faith, a man of prayer, a man of obedience, but also great reputation. Such a great reputation as a great prophet that most of the kings consulted him. Never mind. So here's the thing. Now, he fears for his life and he runs off. 
he fears for his life and he runs off, he runs into the desert on his way to Mount Horeb. And he settles down in the desert under a tree and he's sad. So I want to say to you, if Elijah could have been depressed, sad, uh, for feeling forsaken, confused, despondent and depressed, it's okay if we feel like that sometimes. It's okay we feel like that sometimes, like Elijah, this great prophet of fire, sitting there under that tree, falling asleep, almost collapsing from tiredness, collapsing of uh, uh, despondence, confusion, uh, depression, feeling lonely, feeling perhaps forsaken, Elijah under the tree. But here's the thing, Elijah has to go through the valleys, and the plains of the wilderness to get to the mountain top of Horeb where he gets his next assignment. And isn't that true for our lives today? Sometimes we have to go through the, the desert of valleys or the, the valleys of the wilderness before we can get to the mountain tops. Now I promise you that we will get through this pandemic. God promises it in his word. And what happened in the day of Elijah, we can have that assurance that we will come through with faith and trust in our God. So we must say like Elijah, what his name means, Jehovah is our God. Just as Jehovah, Elijah's God, got him through his desert and valley uh, season and got him back up to the mountain of Horeb, so we must be then obedient, we must remain in the faith, and then we must persist, and then we will also get out on tops, on top of our next spiritual mountain. So I want to say to you that God, the God of love, is in control. 1 John 4, it says that fear, dri oh, sorry, love drives out fear. Let me repeat, uh, correction. Perfect love drives out fear. Love drives out fear. So we believe in the Father God Almighty, the Father God of love, and that love should give us the assurance and peace that we need that we will come through our uh, pandemic desert season. And we can know that through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, look at the symbols here. So as Elijah wakes up from a deep sleep under the tree in the desert, an angel appears to him and then supply him with a, a coal fire, some fresh bread, baked bread, and then water. Now watch the symbols here. The coal fire can only remind me of the power of the Holy Spirit. John 14, uh, 18, and then 20, and then the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. So it is by the fire of the spirit, the spirit of the fire that we will endure. Those are the powerful symbols out of this experience of Elijah for me from the coals and the fire. And then the bread that was provided to Elijah by the angel, the bread. We need to stay in the bread of life, John 6. We need to stay in the bread of life, Jesus Christ, the Logos. We need to find our spiritual nourishment in the Word. Get deep in the Word, in the Word, the Bible, the Logos, Jesus Christ Himself. You will find a lot of encouragement in the bread of life, Jesus Christ, John 6 Himself. And then also under the tree, the angel supplies Elijah with a jug of fresh water. Wow! A jug of fresh water. And the spiritual lesson for me and spiritual supernatural symbol there, the water is the water of life. Jesus said in John 4 and John 7, I am the water of life. Whoever comes to me and drink will never thirst again. And out of him will come forth springs of living water. Thank you, Father God, for giving us water of life, Jesus Christ himself, the bread of life, Jesus Christ himself, and the Holy Spirit, our comforter, strength, and wisdom in this time. And my friend, if you do not know uh, the bread of life, Jesus Christ himself, I strongly recommend you to receive him 
after this clip as your saviour and redeemer. Until next time, goodbye.